Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Nail Logical podcast. Hello, everyone. It's fall again. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Hollow Taco in the new Hollow Taco Tea Cremes collection. Mm. Is it creams or cremes? It's cremes. It's E accent circonflex. Oh, is this when brands do this to make it sound fancier? No, it's because I'm bilingual, and that's literally oh. how you write creme. Creme. Creme, <laughs> like creme fraiche. Yes, but <laughs> not ice cream, uh, nail polish. <laughs> so when you're in Quebec, it's creme. When you're in America, it's creams. Sure. Okay. So anyways, we just launched the new Hollow Taco Tea Cremes, which is our fall collection. Mm -hmm. And you guys are loving the vibes, the fall aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And people have said it looks like vintage 70s fall. Which it's got I, some Mad Men yeah, vibes. Yeah, I kind of see it w w with the butterscotch color kind of bringing that pop. And that's what Ben is repping on his nails. Thank you for painting your nails on stream, Always. Ben. But yeah, we still have some tea collection set boxes in mm -hmm. stock available on today taco tuesday at hollowtaco.com sure. the individuals are still available as well they're yes. not limited editions so. yeah just the box is limited edition and you can pick that up if you want in time for fall at mm -hmm. the link down below in the video description box or go to hollowtaco.com and if nail polish isn't your thing there's a secret link down below well <laughs> not a secret link uh Christine has chosen some of her favorite teas at the official tea of Simply Nail Logical. Which is David's, <laughs> David's tea. David's tea. <laughs> it should be called, I'm, you know, petitioned to rename it to Simply's tea. No, I'm just no. kidding. But yeah, if you check out the link down below, uh, you'll find Simply's Picks, which is basically a curated list of some of Christine's favorite teas. Mm -hmm. Full disclosure, those are affiliate links. Um, but yeah, we always see questions from people asking what teas you like. Mm -hmm. So we just thought this would be a fun way of showing people what teas you like. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I'm going to refresh the page over time. That's kind of the idea. But right now we have the teas that pair nicely with the new Hollow Taco collection. And then we also have my core favorites, like my ride or die teas that I have all the time. So you'll see both of those. <laughs> and you can die. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, annoying language. <laughs> but you can only get it through my individual link mm. you can only see that page it's not accessible if you just like search it so you have to use the link and if you're watching on youtube it's in the video description box mm -hmm. different links for canada and the u.s oh uh, yes yeah. good point yeah all right so continuing with the oh, wait we didn't even mention that's on the simply's picks page you get 10 percent off if you buy four or more items from simply's picks so yes. that is the discount component of this yes <laughs> continuing with the tea theme mm -hmm. uh spill it you wanted to spill some tea today. What does that mean? I'll gossip you. Basically, we're just know. doing an ask me anything. We asked people what tea they wanted us to spill. You know, maybe there's literal questions about tea and we're happy to spill it. Just not on the uh, audio equipment. Yes. So let's just see what questions people have. <laughs> uh, first one from Header. Uh, do you take tea brewing and consumption super seriously? As in, do you care about water temperature? quality slash origin of the tea and whether it's a loose leaf or not etc mm -hmm. how I, seriously do you take your tea christine very seriously <laughs> as serious as we should be taking our taxes and our payments and installments and you know tax returns uh mm -hmm. it matters it matters a lot for the experience for the taste <laughs> okay <laughs> being serious. no but are I, you being I, serious so in the beginning when okay. i used to just use like drugstore tea bags let's say drugstore tea yeah like at the drugstore you can get a I mean, pack like a of grocery tea store bag. yeah a grocery store oh, drugstore okay. whatever drugstore sorry i'm so used to saying drugstore nail polish like a pharmacy to yeah, get a tea pharmacy bags? tea no <laughs> Um, when I first bought tea, it was just in those giant packs of like a hundred that were very cheap and they come in the tea bags already. And it wasn't until like university where I, uh, discovered loose leaf tea. Cause I had friends who shopped at David's tea or we'd, we'd go into some of their physical stores, which mm -hmm. they, they used to have more in Canada. Um, and then I learned about how the water temperature does matter. So if you're making green tea, for example, and mm -hmm. you boil it in like 200 degrees Fahrenheit, like actual boiling water temperature to boil like spaghetti or something, you're going to ruin yeah. the green tea because the green tea is more sensitive and it's going to make it bitter. So some teas will turn like gross tasting or kind of bitter if you mm -hmm. boil them at a hot temperature. 
So we do have a kettle where you can select the temperature. That yeah. is pretty fancy, it's I guess. The fanciest. What is the old fashioned way of doing like have you ever had a kettle that like whistles on the stove? No, but my sister has one of those. So I ask yeah. her, how do you know the temperature? <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> how do you know the temperature? Well, I think th I think there's how a trick loud to it's it. Whistling. Yeah, like maybe you don't let it overboil, right? Sure, you just sure, take sure. it off when it has just started to boil and then like you're probably mm -hmm. good. And hey, like you can do what you want, but there are general instructions for like tea tasting and the best way to experience certain teas. And if you care enough and you can, then there are kettles that exist where you can literally program it to only boil at 185 or go up to 200 if you're making like black tea or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So very, very serious business here. <laughs> uh, next one from Prith with Thracha. <laughs> what do you think about influencers at the Met Gala, like Nikki Tutorials, Emma Chamberlain, and many more? Why weren't you there, Ben? Uh, my invitation got lost in the mail, I think. This, uh, why was this something, why is the Met Gala something a people thing? care about so much? Yeah, I don't, it's a fashion thing. I don't want to act like I don't know it at all. Obviously, I've heard about it in social media and general entertainment I just feel news. like in, in our circles, we hear more about it from the perspective of people reacting to it and sort of goofing on it than I think we know of people who sort of care about it in the first place. Well, it's kind of like the Oscars. Do you remember watching the Oscars growing up and like, oh, it's Oscars night and maybe your family would turn it on? Yeah, yeah. I used to. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, I could be wrong. Obviously, it's not an award show. It's a different type of show but it is a show for the average person at home who's just sitting on their couch to watch and live vicariously through these ridiculous uh displays of wealth of fashion mm -hmm. and you know things we don't have yeah i guess the meme coming out of this one was more about uh alexandria ocasio cortez cortez aoc, a AOC. wearing the tax the rich dress <laughs> yeah and i guess people thought it was ironic that she was wearing a tax the rich dress surrounded by like such a, a of display of opulence and entitled people although that's not really ironic she's using a platform surrounded by rich people to be like you should be taxing these people more i actually don't really see what contradiction there is there but anyway um in terms of youtubers participating in it they are today's celebrities it's mm -hmm. not like there's anything really controversial or weird about that i think in some circles they're sort of seen as like the lesser than like can you believe they would sit emma chamberlain at a table with uh lady, jennifer lady lawrence gaga or, or lady gaga um, and it's like yeah i don't i don't see that division as strongly as maybe yeah some i think that's do. that's an unfair criticism of like some fashion elite houses making that criticism if they did i don't even know but like i'm assuming maybe that has happened and yeah they need to realize that like where is the influence it's among uh, YouTubers like Emma Chamberlain and Nikki Tutorials. So I think it's cool that it's not just about they influence were who gets invited there, though, right? So, like, I, I don't really know. Like, how do they decide who gets to go I to the no Met? I have no idea. I have no idea. Is it like a status thing? Do they also check their reputation and like, make sure it aligns with? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What are they trying to align with? Yeah, what we, is the Met? We don't really know what we're talking about. <laughs> I guess, like, there's no difference between a James Charles and a Kim Kardashian being there in my mind. But if the distinction is like a super talented musicians and actors and actresses mm -hmm. compared to someone who's famous for doing vlogs on the internet, and that's the distinction that bothers you, I kind of get that, right? Because I wouldn't want everyone, like if, if, if they just invited a bunch of Instagram influencers who got a bunch of likes, but were only known for being like famous for posting ass shots on Instagram, I think that sort of brings the whole perception mm -hmm. of the event down. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, but I do agree. It's kind of confusing. And it's probably just because of my lack of knowledge. Like the Oscars, you expect that talented actors and actresses are attending mm -hmm. because they're literally there maybe potentially to receive an award and everyone there has talent in that domain. Like, the Met Gala is supposed to be a fashion But gala? in which case it shouldn't be about the people even wearing the clothes, right? It should be but more about... But a lot of it is. But a it lot should of it is be... like, who are you wearing and the designer story. But that's the thing. If that was the real emphasis, does it matter that it's uh, Billie Eilish wearing this beautiful dress or should it just be 
someone modeling the clothes and the clothes are the focus. So I think the the designer would argue that it does matter who is wearing them because they want to articulate Billie Eilish captures the Oscar de la Renta woman we were trying to communicate. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making this up. But, okay. but like I think it really does matter in the fashion world who represents them, who they get to design a dress and a story for. I mean, don't ask me. I'd, I'd wear a sock. <laughs> Could you imagine yourself? Didn't someone Photoshop <laughs> a picture did, yeah. of you in the sock on the Thanks, carpet? Thanks, guys. Everyone. I love so that. So you have like no interest in this sort of thing, right? I'm only interested in it insofar as uh, hearing what people have to say about it. And I'm not going to lie. I like seeing the looks. But like I don't, I also don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I wouldn't be mad if I missed out on the live stream or something. You're not watching it in a vicarious like... I wish I could be in that dress on the red no, carpet. No, I would sort of hate way. it. You would hate that. I would literally <laughs> be like, no, I'm not coming. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Janeth, uh, when you go hang out with YouTuber friends, do you always want to be recording? Or is there one time where they'll record and you wouldn't want to be recording? Mm. This is a, a really interesting question. And I think kind of a peek into collabs. Not that there's many, as many going on now because of COVID. But if we're thinking back, mm -hmm. um, a peek into like, do we film everything? Because there's often this decision of like, okay, we're going to go out for lunch and just eat, but I could film it for the vlog. And sometimes if you don't film something, it's like you're, you're missing content that already exists. So why not show it? But then of course there's other times where you're like, I'm tired. I don't want to have to perform. I don't want to be smiling because I just want to hang out with my friends. And it is kind of this decision of like, how do I approach this? And yeah, I admit, like, we've had periods where we're like, what, what should we do? Really? I, I don't think about this one that deeply. We, oh. when they're, these people are actually our friends, we hang out with them off camera. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to find I, like example. I'm sure it has happened sure, okay, where like, we like, don't. <laughs> sorry. Like if we, let's say we go to Asheville and yeah. we're going there with the intention of filming content, but also visiting our friends. You're right. Sometimes it's not entirely clear. Like, today we are filming x y yeah, and z because it's not a professional production but shoot. usually i think it sort of goes unsaid but there's sort of an understanding like hey we're gonna have lunch now don't just whip out the camera when we're all just trying to oh, relax yeah, yeah. and eat you yeah know? that's weird and sometimes i see that in other people's vlogs or like in content houses where it's kind of clear to me as a viewer that they're just like whipping out their phones and vlog cameras and just filming when people are like oh okay i guess we're filming that that has never happened it's the kind of content you do friends. too though right like i don't think we're really friendly with people who are filming daily vlogs for example i heard casey neistat on a someone else's podcast recently and he was talking about like at one point when he was daily vlogging he was making decisions mm -hmm. on who he would hang out with based on whether he could get a segment of the vlog out of hanging out with that person and how yeah. like toxic that became in his life. Yeah. So that, that is a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I've never felt that in terms of like the sort of social situations we've been in. Yeah, exactly. And if you're at an event like VidCon where, you know, everyone's filming, I think you kind of just understand that like, okay, we're going to film this thing. Cause we're literally there for work right? VidCon as an influencer, you're going there for work related to your brand and your videos, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on the context. But if we're just hanging out with people outside of an event like that, and we're at their house, then I think generally the expectation isn't like film 24 seven. It's actually majority not filming. <laughs> right? That'd be pretty... yeah, that would be weird. I can't even imagine like, hey, I'm, I'm here in Sophia and Tyler's bathroom, just vlogging. <laughs> yeah, imagine. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, all right, from Redacted77. Uh, ben, if you could be a public figure other than being known as the tea getting guy, <laughs> what would you want to be known for? You would want to be a musician, actor, author, uh, scientist. Uh, keep in mind, this is what you would want to be good at, not necessarily reflect on your actual talents. Mm -hmm. So, what do you want to be good at? <laughs> I couldn't, I'm not talented enough to Are be any more, of those things. Ben is more than just the getting the tea guy. Although that I'm, was great. I'm okay with being, you know, like, maybe you should, very early on, I used to sort of goof on boyfriends that w wanted to become famous through their girlfriend's yeah. content, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like maybe there's this perception that I've sort of increasingly inserted myself into things. I kind of want to just say, like, 
No, he hasn't. <laughs> that really, there was a time where you were having less fun making videos and you wanted me to basically be in them. So in other words, I dragged Ben into my content more. And, and I've gotten more comfortable being on camera over the mm -hmm. years. That's yeah. really obvious. But there's still not really a part of me that needs to be anything more than the tea getting guy. I'm just willing and kind of enjoy talking to you on this podcast or mm -hmm. popping into your stream. I'm, I'm less anxious or weird about that. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't need to be more than the tea getting guy. Yeah, I feel like there's always this underlying assumption, and we got this question in the sister podcast with Jen, that like uh, an assumption that the other person who wasn't as famous but who is related to the person who is famous wanted to be as mm -hmm. famous as that other person. And just, well, just like of, my sister. A lot sister, of people want to be famous. I, I guess. So, so maybe it's a projection thing. But like mm -hmm. in all honesty, as my sister said herself, like, she has no interest in it. She just did, she does the videos with me because I asked her and she said, okay, <laughs> sure. But like she doesn't care to be her own public figure. And I think the same is the case with you. Like you're happy to do it, but are you looking for more? Yeah, no, I'm good. If maybe <laughs> I should, good. if I should actually answer the question though, that yeah, what yeah. would I want? What would you do? Just hypothetically. If I could be anything, yeah. it's kind of like a dream job question, which I feel like we've answered before. And I've, I've said like, I want it to be a jazz drummer, but like, I don't mm -hmm. think I'd actually want to be a jazz drummer. A famous jazz drummer? Well, I, I just enjoyed drumming. I like jazz. Would you drum on camera? Now? Yeah. Uh, in this fantasy or in real life? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, no, I mean, I, I don't Hypothetical. know. Hypothetical. Would you be mad if I got a drum set? I haven't had one in uh, Where years. Where would you put it? In the kitchen. <laughs> Right by the treadmill? <laughs> the cats would hate it, eh? Yeah. So yeah. I would be mad. <laughs> yeah, maybe You can get those maybe electronic one ones that don't actually make noise. Those aren't the same. You need uh -huh. the acoustic drums to have the real uh, What about feel. guitar? You're good at guitar. What about guitar? Would you be a guitar streamer? I want to be a, a jazz drummer, Christine, not okay. a guitarist. I don't know. Don't crush it's my dreams. It's an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late to follow your dreams. <laughs> okay, so what is your dream? I, I don't know. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Uh, from Anna Katasasaki, uh, what was the most difficult time for you personally throughout your career as an influencer, simply? Going to Polish Mountain. I'm just kidding. Hey, this is the brutally honest tea spilling <laughs> the episode. The brutally honest. You have to give honest, sincere answers only. I actually did cry around that time. What time? Polish Mountain? Yeah, after Polish Mountain. Why? Because that's when I was getting probably the most hate I've ever gotten in my career, as I um. learned is expected when you plummet, plummet, when you spike to popularity, <laughs> you're going to plummet in terms of your self-esteem. Yeah, your self-esteem. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was a lot of people just like uh, expectedly, who is this dumb bitch <laughs> or whatever it is they said, making comparisons yeah. from me to other, other women on the platform. And that was tough, even though I was old, like I was like 26 or 27. So to me, like I was already mature and done high school bullshit, but it was like high school all over again, but on the internet. And that was a very strange thing that like none of my peers at the time had experienced. So I was experiencing that alone. And I don't want to say like that's, it was a very difficult time for me, but I didn't show it. Like no one knew that. No one mm. knew. I, I cried over it. And I remember crying in the car one time. We were driving home from work. Just yeah, like bawling about it. I remember that. Because yeah. there was just some people like harassing me at the same time. And it was uh, an awful feeling. As much as I was trying to like explain it away as this happens. This is the internet. Yeah, I'm a person too. And it hurt me. But I did not want it to affect, uh, you know, my experience online. And what I, the vibes I give to you guys on the internet. So yeah. like that, no one really knew. It was a super intense time, right? Yeah. So like all the good stuff is very intense at that time, but all the bad, it's the best of times and it was the worst of times. You know what I mean? Like everything that's great is super great, but everything is bad. You're not even accustomed to and everything seems really terrible. And I was overly um, conscious of the fact that I did not want to complain ever publicly. Mm. Like I was super aware, like overly... <laughs> Uh, precautious about i am not complaining 
you're not gonna yeah yeah so like i didn't want to talk about it um or i didn't want to be like everyone hates me or like whatever because people be like shut up you if your video is 20 million views like you're rich or whatever people mm -hmm. would say in response to that so i didn't let on to any of that so i would say that was probably one of the most difficult times emotionally in my career because it was early on and i had not learned and then i also just think from a volume perspective of hate that has drastically declined since that time yeah, obviously i'm not getting you know that kind of emotional uh those shots taken at me in the same way as i was um mm -hmm. on a more personal level though the last year has been really tough because of my eyes, my eye rash. Mm. So I'm sure you guys have heard me uh, complain about that one. <laughs> but I feel like that's something that I had to share because it's literally on my face. And if you've ever had something on your face, even if it's like a zit or something, you know when you look at someone and you think they see that, what you perceive to be like a defect on your face, mm -hmm. and then you don't want to make eye contact or you just like don't want to even meet them or have a conversation – that's how I feel because of my eye rashes. Yeah. Honestly. Even if people aren't noticing it as as much as you think they are, you're Yeah. You're interpreting that. You're feeling like that's yeah. what all people it, are seeing, right? It absolutely um hurts my self esteem because I am a an online influencer who has a face and my face is in most of my content, even though nail art, whatever. But like you see my face in most videos and it, it made me self-conscious that like I can never do anything about it. I can't cover it up because you just can't cover up rashes mm -hmm. that sting. Um, and then although people may not say like, why is there a rash on your eye? They say other things like you look tired or what's wrong with you. You used to do good makeup. Now you're ugly. Why haven't you put any effort into it? And like the other ways of saying that I don't look good. <laughs> and like, that's not, that's not good to hear. Um, I don't let it get to me too much because I know the truth about my eyes and like why that, that's going on I, no i'm not tired i mean i am tired but that's not why i look this You're way also tired <laughs> i'm also tired but yeah um so that's just been really tough for me emotionally to have to deal with, with my eyes i just wish my face looked normal to be honest i think you think you look worse than you do and that maybe I don't know. We don't have to get too deep on this, but like there are times where you're like, oh, I feel like I look, I, my eyes look so bad right now and mm -hmm. I don't think they do. And you think that's all people are seeing. And it's, you see one comment in a three hour stream and all of a sudden you feel bad about it when that's not the overwhelming perception. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> but I shall keep my blue light glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, from Zanibo, opinions on coffee. I know you probably prefer tea, but can you really deny how amazing coffee is? Coffee? We don't know her. This is the <laughs> tea spilling podcast, Ben. I, I'm a coffee guy. You cheat on tea with coffee. I drink coffee basically every morning. Confess. Spill it. Do you... Like, when was the last time you actually tried coffee? Because I understand, like, you maybe tried coffee years ago and hated it. Yeah. But I feel like some people just change and all of a sudden they like the taste one day. I've had a sip of a latte of yours here and there okay. just to remind myself that I don't like coffee. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it. All right. Then we can deny how amazing coffee is. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it's what works for you. I just don't like the strong taste and I just much prefer all the options with tea. Hmm. I think that's what it is. Fair enough. Uh, from Mabre Rebecca Munshenk. Uh, what are your conversations like when it comes to what you do and don't share online, either in regards to yourselves or your friends and family? Uh, you share a lot, but I'm sure you don't share everything. P.S. I started drinking David's tea because of you and strawberry <laughs> rhubarb is perfection. Mm, that one's good <laughs> iced. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what do and don't we share online, Christy? I think the number one thing that comes to mind that I don't share is anything that would potentially be a risk to our privacy. Yeah. So I've kind of mentioned that before. That's why we don't do a house tour. That's why I don't show my car. Uh, not that I'm Jennifer Aniston and the paparazzi stalking me. I'm not saying Jennifer that. Aniston. But just like Jennifer Aniston, whatever. Whoever sure. is the hottest celebrity right now. Um, I, I know that, that I'm not. But I just like, I'm just hyper careful mm -hmm. about it. And I don't think that's a bad thing. But it's always on my mind when we're like out in public. Um, so I think privacy is the first thing that I don't share or anything that would disclose things and that's it's hard sometimes to 
make people in your life understand that who aren't in this world mm. too. It's caused some tension in my life that I have to be sort of like with family protective of private information. And some people just don't really understand or think that's silly. And it's, yeah, that's caused some stress in my life. Yeah. And on that point, family as well. Um, like you guys know, I have some family who you've seen re mm -hmm. on recurring episodes of simply or whatever. And those are family members who I'd asked if they would participate and they were willing and eager and I wanted to have them on my channel and have and I was it made sense for me and like the the story of the simply fam I guess like I wanted them on my channel and obviously I have more family members than the one you ones you've seen mm -hmm. um and there's a reason related to why I don't show my entire family some of that's just privacy I don't want to spell out my entire ancestry tree <laughs> yeah. and people you know, my family, just like yours, have private lives, uh, private businesses, partners, or whatever it is. And it's not, I mean, like, there's more than just one reason. And sometimes it's not that straightforward, right? Like, there are people who want privacy, totally mm -hmm. fair. And then there's people who I don't think it's the best decision to put them on my channel. And that's up to me, who yeah. I want to put on Simply and Illogical or related mm -hmm. channels. And one of the strangest things about having any sort of level of internet fame is, uh, I don't know, there, there are people in your life that knew you before you were famous or had money and things. And I'll be like deliberately vague, but like in a few cases, I'll even talk about for me, I've had people reach out to me that I haven't spoken to in years. I like barely know. But when they find out like, oh, you're kind of internet famous, mm. they take an interest in you in a way that makes it really hard to not think they're only interested because they think you have some sort of level of fame or money. And it's definitely just made me a sort of more guarded person in who I get to know or open up to. And that's like, it seems so sort of like narcissistic to have to think about yourself that way as if like, oh, I'm such a big deal. I have to like worry about those mm -hmm. things. But I, I guess it's hard to know where like the proper balance is there when you know there's a legitimate concern or likelihood like that that can be the case as well yeah and like you were saying earlier there's some people who just don't understand the sensitivities of like why this privacy is important maybe because they're older they don't understand social media and like how it's a risk to mm -hmm. showing your location or whatever and i think it's mostly that that, that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. It's mostly older people who don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that makes it tough to explain to them because it's not something they've ever seen or witnessed as a problem. So they just think I'm the problem for being stubborn, for not wanting to do this or that. Sure. All right. That was honest. Mm -hmm. uh, from Anna Banana 2244 Justin Trudeau, hot or not? Excuse me, that's our boss. <laughs> this is coming out uh, the day after a Canadian election. Oh, We're probably right. just learning the results now because they can only count all the mail-in ballots the next day. Mm -hmm. We did advance voting. We did so vote. We already advance, voted. Which I yeah. think a record number of people did, yeah. although the vast majority of people still vote on a election day. But politics aside, Christine, <laughs> whether he was PM or not, Justin Trudeau, hottie or naughty? <laughs> Naughty. I mean, <laughs> can it be both? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, he's we are public servants. We work yeah. for the government, so we so cannot comment he's on a his boss, policies. Coworker. I mean, is it sexual uh, harassment to comment mm. on the attractiveness of another? Uh... Yeah, I mean, attractiveness. <laughs> I don't think has to be a demeaning sure uh, category a way of describing someone well, i mean i guess it depends not. on what you say we're not trying to objectify him yeah is what I'm no trying to say. of course just only the calendar is trying to objectify him i've seen those the calendar no you never seen those okay never mind is there a calendar of like cute justin trudeau photos it's harmless do you have one no <laughs> He's anyway. an attractive guy. Okay. Like, why are we dancing yeah, around yeah. this? No, no, no. <laughs> Obviously, he is attractive, especially when you consider uh, the roster of all world leaders the that roster. there's ever been. Like, look at pictures of world leaders. Yeah. And then tell me he's not attractive. It's, it's not possible. <laughs> okay, so certainly relative to his peers. This is why TikTok calls him daddy. Okay, because mm -hmm. if you put him next to... Well, the issue is like... 
so many politicians are like fossils. They're like well, they're ancient. Like 87 they're years like old. <laughs> about to crumble into dust. Well, is it? It's bizarre yeah. how that. It's maybe one of the biggest problem in modern politics is how like it's always old. We're white electing men. like seventy year old white guys who are super yeah. out of touch with I think how most people live now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we but absolutely yeah, I think need more diversity in world leaders. It's a very low bar for Justin Trudeau to be hot compared to. To those, those old people. white men. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, but, okay, take that aside. Okay. If you're just walking down the street, if Justin Trudeau walks by you, he's, are you taking a second look? No, because he's quite a bit older than me. Okay. Like, a lot. Isn't he almost 50? We Probably. looked up his age the last time, and we were kind of surprised that he was young. He was like 46 the last time we looked this up. To me, that's too old for me. Sure. I think. Okay. But I, I don't know <laughs> what the right thing is to say. But like, no, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm only doing a double take because it's literally the prime minister. If sure. I saw him on the road, I'd be like, oh my God, is that mm -hmm. Justin? And then I'd probably Snapchat him. I saw his wife once in a, <laughs> Sophie. Know, in a store in Ottawa. Okay. And she had like an RCMP detail with her. Yeah. She's a, she's a she's pretty also lady. Yeah. Attractive. Yeah. Yeah. All right, <laughs> moving on from Katie Bug Nail Fies. Uh, favorite type of tea? Herbal, black, caffeine, or caffeine free? Question mark. Well, you can go to my Simply Picks page. <laughs> Here's a plug. At the link down below in the video description box on YouTube on our Simply Pod Logical channel, just in case you're listening to this mm. podcast. As we learned last week or two weeks ago, people do listen on spotify or otherwise and uh, they don't they're not on youtube so shout out to everyone listening but to yeah. get to my simply's <laughs> picks page you're gonna have to go to youtube after and click the link mm -hmm. um in general like i like them all and i'm yeah. not picky about caffeine because i find that even the caffeinated teas like black teas or green tea don't really affect me because it's not that much caffeine as someone who me, brings you tea a lot mm -hmm. can i kind of guess the mood what your sort of favorites are well i've seen the list so i you already know i kind of know but I, I guess my point is when i think of the tea i'm bringing you okay. during the course what of the is day, your process then <laughs> so i usually don't bring you your early morning tea you do that, that yourself myself, but yeah. i'm aware that you'll have green tea in the morning it's a rough life when you make your own tea <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you make your own tea and you usually start with green tea right correct uh and then throughout the day i'm either bringing you like a a black tea or a chai mm -hmm. so it might just be irish breakfast mm -hmm. and that's usually or... just before noon maybe afternoon when i uh -huh. still want caffeine or like i'm, I'm cool sure. with caffeine it's just, it's not like a need it doesn't have to be caffeine yeah. it can be more of a rooibos uh, exactly so it's like rooibos or black teas or, or chai. even chais yeah. throughout the day or oolong if it's later at night i usually try to grab the ones that don't have the caffeine marking on them or the, at least say low mm -hmm. caffeine so like the peppermint tea That's is a really a nice tea at night yeah, i love that one at night. um what else there's there's a few that are like design like sleepy time teas what's it called yeah i think it's i don't cool. know i usually bring you the peppermint the peppermint night. is is my favorite yeah for mm -hmm. for nighttime but yeah it depends on the mood and a little bit of the season although i would say that there's some like classic chais that'll drink all year round or like a good Irish breakfast black tea. I'll drink that mm -hmm. all year round. I don't care. Or maple syrup oolong. Maple that's syrup a, oolong. That's yeah. one you have a lot. Okay. I do drink a lot of oolong teas too. Mm. I like oolong. I all like right. all of them. <laughs> this is now the, this is the tea podcast <laughs> the tea. after all. All right, let's move you oolong. You didn't even ask what I'm drinking right now in this what mug. What are you drinking right now? That has hollow on it. That's on the Simply's Picks page. <laughs> okay, we get it. What's I'm in the mug? I'm drinking maple syrup oolong. <laughs> okay, there you go. Proof. <laughs> uh, from Chelsea Bell. Uh, for Ben, have you ever cringed hearing Ban called while Simply is filming? You, you said it wrong. Ban. Okay. Ban. Thank you. <laughs> Are you cringing? I, I think I roll my eyes. Where, no. Uh, how do I put this? Sometimes I don't know you're filming and you call for me. And I guess sometimes I'm annoyed <laughs> that I don't know if you actually need me for something oh. or if you need me to like just appear for the sake of for content. For the sake of content, yeah. Yeah. There have been times I have found that a little annoying. Annoying because you don't know which type of Bane summon yeah. it is? Yeah. Okay. I think maybe that explains why you started saying Ben so strangely for Simply Content. 
Because like if you need me, you're like, Ben, Ben, there's a yeah. spider. I need no, you no, to no. kill it. I don't say your name normally. Ever. <laughs> Ever? No. <laughs> Never. No, this is a useful way of I know, oh, this is like my bat oh, signal for content. It's like a code word. It's but the code It's a code band. pronunciation. Yeah. But no, sometimes in real life, I'm just like, ban. It's true. It does happen sometimes. <laughs> And I don't know, like, if you're filming. I'm looking for cameras. We're filming right now. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Okay. <laughs> uh, from Maria Guadalupe. Guadalupe? How do you think you say that? Guadalupe? Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts on the current situation between Trisha Paytas and Ethan Klein? I guess we can't have a tea spill episode <laughs> without some YouTube drama culture. If you don't care about <sighs> YouTube, skip ahead five minutes. Everyone cares about this for some reason. Uh, I don't want to say too much about this. Like, I, I watch the H3 podcast, I'll admit that. Pretty... I think, yeah. Not... Firstly, people want to know, did we even pay attention to this? Like, do we even... Do we know what's going on? When Frenemies was a giant podcast on YouTube and still going on, we... we I watched quite a bit of that. I watched it as well. Yeah. I watched the show. And I'll say this just sort of more generally about the H3 podcast is I think uh, they are the closest thing we have to like a Howard Stern of YouTube. Maybe that doesn't mean much mm -hmm. to you, but people who... So Howard Stern was like a shock jock, became really famous on the radio for being very innovative by being really crass and offensive and willing to say crazy things that other people on the radio weren't saying. Are you saying that's like Ethan? I don't think Sorry, he's I'm as just, wild. I'm telling you okay. sort of Howard Stern in a nutshell. Sure. But Howard Stern was also known for having a whack pack, which is essentially he found uh, very interesting characters, people in real life who had, you know, disabilities or mental health issues. These people were, were uh, I, it's hard to explain, but like he would have mm -hmm. these people on his show for entertainment Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's people who are like freaking out about how offensive that would be today. And he's really changed over time. But sure, sure. essentially he had like people who would come on the show for entertainment who are clearly like troubled people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when H3 started their podcast, I think they've been sort of honest about the fact that Howard Stern was an influence. And I think you could tell Ethan had in his mind a sort of similar thought of let me bring in a bunch of like zany colorful really interesting character online characters into my world to make my show interesting for the sake of content which is why he has a guy like shoe nice on who's mostly famous for you know like eating random objects and drinking things you shouldn't drink and he's like an alcoholic and it's like hmm. that's kind of similar to something stern would have done back in the day had someone who's alcoholic on the show and they would like laugh about the fact that he's an alcoholic you know what I mean? It's like all sort of gross. But I feel like Ethan doing that, I mean, you can think about that what you will. But yeah, he clearly brought some not uh, very great people into his orbit. And I think Trisha Paytas is just another example of that. Hey, great for content, super compelling content, but you know, a pretty, uh, kind of hate the when people use the word problematic, because I think they're just dancing around what they try to say. I think mm -hmm. Trisha Paytas is a pretty awful person in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And whatever, she has her history and baggage and issues. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to argue with you whether or not, you know, I, I think he brought that person into his life. And I think it was very predictable that that situation was going to end in a very toxic way. And I think the trade-off was you got some interesting content out of it. You got a lot of views, but yeah, you brought this person into your life and it was very predictable that it would go this way and end in a lot of acrimony and disaster and real life uh, disagreement, and argument and stress. I think most people who aren't as familiar with Trisha or like who weren't a f previously a fan or even a fan really of Ethan, but just like aware of their content would probably agree with you that from the outside, it, it does kind of look like you could have predicted this just based on like reading about her past behavior and uh, you know the way she would push drama in her content. I think like objectively speaking, no one is really surprised 
Um, hmm. Fans, however, might be very surprised because they thought this was like her her turning point. If you're a fan of Trisha, um, or even Ethan, I can see how fans of Ethan might think, well, maybe Ethan was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. She was coming into the family now. He was trying to do something good for her, and he didn't actually think it would end this way. So I, I can tr- I can also see that side that maybe he didn't think this was absolutely going to end in disaster. But if you step away and you're not emotionally attached to either Trisha or Ethan, I think it's it was not a surprise that this happened. And that's kind of my position on it. So it is very you have to be careful in business about who you involve in your business. Yeah. And this isn't like an insult to someone's intelligence or anything. There are just some people who, based on their past business choices, content choices counts as business when you're an influencer, may not be the best choice to partner with in mm-hmm. moving forward when you're thinking about like the long term and the longevity of a of a business project. Yeah. All right. Let's just leave it at that. That's not <laughs> tea. Like that's just, that's business advice. <laughs> yeah. No. But like I like we don't have any sort of unique or, or insight into this take. that anyone else. Yeah. Doesn't and have, absolutely, but... like it's not our place to comment on what actually happened between them because we don't know. We know as much as you. But I have seen a lot of people ask us this question, like, "What do you think about it?" And I, was, I, I don't really care all that much at this point. It's kind of sad. Like. Yeah. From a humanistic perspective, like, I'm sad that it ended that way. I wish it didn't. I thought it was entertaining while it lasted, but I also saw problems with it, too. Yeah, it was almost more of a guilty pleasure thing, I think, Mm. for me and a lot of people, that it was was clear there were problems with it, even while it was on. Anyway. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, let's move on. (laughs) That's enough tea for that one. Uh, From ekit254, did you ever have any culture shock when you traveled to the U.S.? If not, is there anything American you like, find weird, or dislike? (laughs) What's the biggest culture shock in America, Uh, Christine? Wrong maple syrup. No. (laughs) (laughs) They've got maple syrup in Vermont. It's, okay, yeah, sure. I'm thinking of, like, Florida. Um, (laughs) <laughs> maple syrup doesn't maple make syrup it, find its way down there. <laughs> There's, palm trees do not make maple syrup. Or, no, you know, information um, about managing uh, pandemics either, apparently. Yes, sure. <laughs> if, if we went there now, that would be a culture shock. There'd be no rules. <laughs> no one's wearing masks. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? God, that's so sad. Okay, Anyways, let's so, not uh, go there and, and real... depress everyone currently living there. Okay. Well, uh, one called? thing pre-pandemic I can think of that I did experience a bit of a culture shock was the first time we went to Texas. And the only time the like, only we've time, been yeah. to Texas. And we landed at the airport mm-hmm. and there was a car who picked us up because it was associated with the event we were going to. So we were just like assigned yeah. a car. We were in Austin, by the and way. Was it Austin? Okay. Yeah. And he just started, the driver just started talking about guns and how he had one. <laughs> yeah, completely unprompted. Because he just asked like, where are you from? And we're like, we're from Canada. And he goes, oh, y'all don't have any guns up there? And then we're like, what? <laughs> Yeah. And it was, um, it, it's not him as a person. Like, I'm not like afraid or anything. It's just a reminder of where I was and mm-hmm. what, uh, how different the laws were and the standards and the, the perception of like regular people owning weapons is completely different than my experience in Canada and my entire life. So that was a culture shock. And obviously, that's not all of america texas Mm -hmm. is more known for more people what is it like open carry in some area i don't even know all of it to me i'm just like what are you a cop no (laughs) (laughs) well like yeah i in canada having especially certain types of guns like a handgun is incredibly difficult to get the sort of license you need to do that and Mm -hmm. there's in a lot of restrictions on what you can even do or where you can take it or how, how it needs to, to be transported. Yeah. yeah. So just to get in a car and have someone sort of just unprompted bring up their guns and how much they like guns and things like that was pretty Yeah. Like it, it made weird. me uncomfortable. Like, obviously, <laughs> not that I thought yeah. he was going to do anything, but just like you can imagine that if you were in my position, never seen a gun. No one you know has a gun. It's like, not like why he was taking you? guns. No, out. no, I, I know. But still just talking about it so casually and how he was basically saying it's so weird that we don't just have guns. <laughs> Yeah, There's no guns in Walmart in Canada. Yeah. It, um, that was a bit of a, a culture shock to me. And sure. that shapes some of my impression of the States. Not all of it. Obviously, I've been to other places that aren't as much like that. We were in like, I think Austin is known as the most like liberal 
<laughs> part of Texas too, by the way. Yeah. So it, it's just <laughs> chance, I guess, that we had this very so, particular driver who had you this You can run story. into weirdos anywhere. We were in a... I thought we were in like a progressive part of Texas. Yeah, Austin yeah. is like yeah. a weird progressive kind of city. In weird Texas. in the context of compared to the rest of well, Texas. Well, I think their I think their slogan is "Keep Austin Weird." Oh. Am I making that up? Is that a Portland? I might be mixing up my okay. cities, <laughs> but I think they're known for being sort of an artistic sort of. What about you? Any culture shock? And I don't know about culture shock, but you reminded me of a. Sometimes, if you're just in a car and someone's driving you they'll just say weird things we the most awkward drive of my life you were here for this we had a driver once i think we were in new york trying to get to an airport so we were in the car with this guy for a while i won't say what service anyway there the guy spoke at length about how he was sure bill cosby was innocent Oh, and it got shit. incredibly uncomfortable in the car. I remember that. That I also like remember we weren't sleeping. agreeing with him. So I think you just sort of stopped talking and just started I did. ignoring. I, I literally was so tired. But like I, I was remember. already sort of talking to him, and then it kept going, and it was really uncomfortable. Yeah. And we were stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just sitting there. Was like, and okay. then we could not get out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Fun car rides in the states. Uh, from Destia. Ben, are you really? No, no. Ben, <laughs> are you really the only one who cooks everything but oats and tea? So is it true? Do you bring me tea and feed me? Uh, you, we've established you ca- are capable of making your own tea, <laughs> and tea? you do. You make my breakfast every yeah. morning. Well, you make it the night before. Yeah. And then it sits in the fridge overnight. Yeah. The fridge helps me make your breakfast. <laughs> That's right. That's why we yeah. call them oats overnight. Uh, uh, am I the one who cooks? You know what? We get a uh, a food service. We get a food delivery service. Well, it's like a fresh food, th- but then you have to cook it. Like it's not. Uh, but they make it easy because like you it, only have as much as you kind of need. It's cooking for dummies, you know. <laughs> but I think it's super convenient. It's it's a little bit on the expensive side if you're willing to really meal plan and prep and get your yeah. own groceries. But then you don't have to go get groceries, which is useful during this era. Yeah, sure. And just having food delivered to your door. I think these things are more popular than ever because yeah, of because the pandemic. Of COVID, yeah. So you will help me cook Prepare. those. Because the instructions are, are usually six to... steps and there's a picture and I can figure that out. <laughs> Saute the kale. I can do that. You're better than we give you credit for. I'll say that. But like you aren't someone, I don't know if I've ever seen you come up with a conceptualize recipe. <laughs> a meal you were going to make and cook it no. without that sort of level of no. instruction no yeah yeah you'll never see me going to the grocery store and be like mm, a little bit of thyme a little bit of paprika <laughs> i know what i'm gonna do with no i would have no, no idea, idea. <laughs> uh all right from amateur nail art one is there a black hollow glitter polish in our future do we tell them well, in your future implies, you know, at any time between now and the end of time. And I think time is a flat circle. I believe in the concept of eternal recurrence. So the earth is also there flat, is right? a black hollow glitter at somewhere in the, the continuum of time yes. that may intersect with your current moment. Is it this year? <laughs> <laughs> it, it might be. <laughs> it, it might be. And that's the tea. <laughs> Okay. Uh, from Amy, probably tired. Uh, is there anything that's been made harder for you after growing big on YouTube, social media? People always like to glorify being famous, but I'd appreciate being, seeing people talk about some of the downsides of it. Mm-hmm. I think we already sort of generally talked about the sort of not knowing if people, uh, who come into your life are interested in you or interested in your status. That's yeah. That's kind of the only thing I think I have to say about that. So yeah, family, friends who maybe look at you differently because they go, ooh, ah, you're popular, you have money, mm-hmm. let's be friends again, you, you know, know after kind 10 of, years. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing when, uh, I've had a few times someone find out, like we've had a lot of success online. Like at work. And and all the, like the, the only thing I think that resonates with them is it's led to a lot of financial success and that's what they're thinking of. Oh. So I've had a couple people reach out wanting to talk. And then they'll sort of like pitch me like, hey, I want to make money online. And sorry, pitch isn't the right word because usually the conversation is them just asking how to make money online. And that's always a super awkward conversation because it's like, 
they're not coming with like an idea or something that's interesting or makes them interesting. It's just like, oh, you can make money online? I guess I can too. How do I do that? I've had that happen to me more than once. <laughs> yeah. And it just like, it makes me feel shitty. I don't know why. Yeah. It's almost like it. they undermined what you do. And they think it's like, like oh, okay, oh, well, you, you could, could do, do that. that. And they were like, <laughs> oh, so I heard you like post on Instagram and you make money doing that. Okay, so, so like, how do I do that? So how do I do it? Where do I sign up? I've literally had someone ask me how they sign up to make money online. Yeah. And, and, and it's not like these are just 60-year-olds who don't get social media. People yeah, yeah, our yeah. age have asked me this question. Um, I don't really know what to say to that. <laughs> like, I mean, I do. I, I say, like, there's a lot of work involved, and I try and be nice and high-level just explain them away basically because like i can't really help you you don't have a real question if you already have built an instagram you have content and maybe you just want advice on like what's the best way to link or something like absolutely then i'm happy to give you some advice um but that's not what these people that's not what they want they just go i saw an article that said you have a net worth of two million dollars and like i hear you just post your nails somewhere on the internet i i do my nails I'm good. How, how do I do that? Where do I sign up? Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> good luck. It, it makes me yeah. feel like bad and shitty when people ask me this because they clearly just don't get it. And then there's also this underlying assumption that it's incredibly easy to do. Yeah, but I mean, I, I guess you can't help people like that. I, I'm not interested in helping people like that either. Yeah. And I think it really, what you didn't do this for money either. So I think that makes it weirder for you to That's have the conversation. That's probably why I hate it too. Because people come to me and they go, oh, you spent years developing your passion and it grew into a business? How do I do that? <laughs> Except that's not what they ask. Yeah. They only look at the article they saw that said I had X amount of money. Mm-hmm. And then they say, I want that. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, well, go ahead. <laughs> Try. <laughs> uh, but wait, I just want to add another thing to the negatives. Oh. Uh, apart I don't want to complain too much. No, right? I don't want to complain, but I also want to be honest. And I think that's what people want. One thing that has changed for me is my levels of anxiety. <laughs> mm. Is I've always, I've been open about this before, about how like VidCon crowds or just crowds in general, even pre-pandemic were uh, hard for me because I'm mm. not really a high level of people person. I'm okay <laughs> like hanging out with friends or whatever, but you put me in a room with 300 people staring at me. I, I suffer. Mm-hmm. I struggle. So um, if you were like giving a guest lecture oh my God, no. <laughs> in university as a TA or and something. And I had to once and I was absolutely terrified. So nothing to do with being a famous, famous person, no. just being in front of a crowd of people. Just being in front of a crowd of people has always been incredibly hard for me as long as I can remember after I finish acting. Because that's what people will, will like almost say I'm a hypocrite or like that doesn't make sense. You were a child actor. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you, but for some reason, I was fine as a kid, and then high school happened, and all of a sudden, I wanted no one to look at me, ever. And I think that that just continued um, in university and group presentations or class um, presentations Mm -hmm. or thesis defenses, and I was, like, constantly anxious. And has this been exacerbated, you think, by... I think, in some ways, I've gotten better at speaking, you know, and, and like on a podcast, I know there's people watching on stream has helped me too. And making videos has helped me, but it also depends on the kind of content I'm speaking about and mm-hmm. why I'm saying it. Um, but I do think my anxiety that existed pre YouTube obviously got worse in the context of knowing that more people are actually paying attention to me because I could try and justify and rationalize when I was giving a guest lecture that half the students in the class are asleep. They don't care. Yeah. They're not judging me, really. They're just like, what's going to be on the test? Do you know what I mean? Like, so you could kind of use that to help you get through it. But now people are watching me because they want to watch. And some people, not everyone, but some people watch you because they want to see if you're going to mess up. Not, yeah. And I don't say like I'm, I'm not unique in that. I think celebrities or influencers in general are constantly watched to see if they slip up. I don't think I'm a target for that, to be honest. But maybe, maybe there's some people just watching me and listening so they can write down what I say and use it later. And there's just that anxiety that, that lives in me. Um, some of it's irrational. Some of it's just because I've always been like this and now I have to deal with that. At the same time, I don't really voice this all the time Hmm. because 
it's my choice to put myself on the internet. It's yeah. my choice to be on this podcast and tell you this. And a lot of great, amazing things come along with that sort of exactly. success, right? So it does not take away from the amazing amount of support that you guys give me, the fun we have on streams, the hollow taco like announcements and all of that. But it's a very human thing to to sort of dwell on the negative sometimes. Like when you were talking about your eyes before, yeah, there can be a thousand supportive comments, but just one or two negative comments or criticizing comments. I, I think our brains are just designed to retain that more. And it's hard when yeah. it's top of mind and just from a physiological perspective my eyes are often itchy and like burning so f yeah. f like it's it's not something that i forget because i can feel it and i can feel it itch so that's why when someone says it i'm like you're right you're right because i can yeah. literally feel it so sorry anyways. to bring up your eyes again okay, okay moving on <laughs> uh from hello trickster god hi uh gonna be honest christine i kind of miss when you were just doing youtube for funsies when, now I'm when having was no fun. When did this person decide you were having fun and aren't now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> want to know which at which video was I no longer having fun. We we noticed some. Uh, I was gonna say passive aggressive, but usually these comments aren't really all that passive at all. But we'll see comments about people. You know, it's not always coming from a bad place. Like mm -hmm. there are some people now who just wish you were making more traditional pre-edited, simply uploaded videos, whereas mm -hmm. you've been streaming a lot lately. I'm not going to speak for you, but that decision isn't motivated by you're not doing live streams to for make some more business money. reason. Yeah. You're doing it because you're enjoying them more. So you're kind of doing the opposite of what this person's implying. If I wanted to do YouTube for business and not for funsies, I would not be live streaming. I would be making more Simply and Illogical videos every Saturday mm -hmm. because those videos make 15 times more money than my live streams currently do. And if we're being brutally honest, spilling tea, mm -hmm. the time at which YouTube was the least funsies was probably at the end of leading up to you making that halo eyebrow video where you sort of started yeah. crying and saying, I'm going to take a break. You were making videos for a while there. I don't want to say out of like, it wasn't a financial thing. Like I need to keep making videos to make money. I think you felt an obligation. That people expected me every Saturday. So you were making videos for a while when I don't think you really genuinely. Yeah. And I think the irony it. is, is that if you ask this commenter, to point to a calendar and simply universe like where I was doing it for quote fun they would point to the time in 2018 where I wasn't doing it as I don't want to say I wasn't not. doing it for fun but I that was a really hard time that I knew I needed a break and that I was mostly posting to every Saturday because I felt like I'd set that expectation and there were so many people there was millions of people every week who would set their alarm for simply Saturday I'm going to say that was the end of 2019, but I could be mixing up. Is that 2018, really? I wow. don't know. Time flies when you're having funsies. <laughs> anyway, I don't... Yeah. I'm not... I, yeah. A anyway. I, I, I see comments like this. Um, I usually don't respond unless it's like a more... Uh, I'm just wondering what your plan is. I see you're live streaming and like I've responded to some of those comments, including on the live stream. I'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I do occasionally see more... Comments that come from like a rude place, like we don't we don't want this simply. We want the old simply and illogical. We don't care about live streams. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, thanks. Like I want to do them, and it feels like the comments are designed to make me feel bad about what's obviously my choice, rather than a a positive like feedback. And maybe they think they're giving feedback by voicing that, but there's also thousands of people who just want to watch me do whatever. I have fun doing and they're enjoying the live stream. So I find like putting it in, putting it in a way that's designed to insult or make someone feel guilt is never productive. Sure. Yeah. People are allowed to express that yeah. they prefer some types of content over others. Like that's not the issue, yeah. right? And maybe in a perfect world, it is a balance of both. But I think I appreciate that you're at a point now where you're just going to do what you feel like doing. And so mm -hmm. people aren't, having to guess that you're doing something for any reason other than that's just what you want to do or feel like doing. Yeah. Yeah. 
cool. Uh, just a couple more from Sura NASA. Does Christine realize that her working so much might not be very sustainable? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and if so, have you made plans to reduce the amount of work you do in the long run? Do you have a retirement plan? What's the pension plan look What's like, there? Ben? I took a retirement course through the government at one point. So did I. Everyone <laughs> takes it early on. Don't get too excited. I should, I'll, yeah, I should explain why. Because yeah. basically, it's a, it's con- oh, there's, it's two days. The first part of it is explaining to you like what it means to have a pension. Yeah. And like how you should account for that in your will and things like that. So it's useful to know that early on in your career. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and then the second half of the course was funny because it's clearly designed for people who are about to retire. Because it was like, here's a pie chart of your day. You currently work eight hours of that day. And then they ask you like, what are you going to do with your day now that you have that giant piece of the pie not filled with work anymore? And that's an issue for a... A lot of people assume retirement's going to be great and fun. A lot of people really struggle with not having some sort of purpose or task to do yeah. for the majority of their day as well. Yeah, I, I know a few people who are planning retirement and are also dealing with that issue of like, what do they do? And mm-hmm. I guess I'm trying to, like, I'm listening to them and just not saying anything from my life. But in my life, I'm... Uh, they should start making money on Instagram. No, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I just like, I cannot picture having the problem where I don't know what to do with I my know. day. Yeah, I like, know. I need more days in a week currently. I know. I don't know what what this means to retire and have 80% of your day that you now need to figure out if you like gardening or you want to, you know, run a shelter or something, like, which would be totally cool if I had the time. Uh, mm. but, but right now, I... A, sh- a I shelter? Can't. Sorry. A, a cat shelter. Oh, okay. Shelter. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, have you made plans to reduce... We know what you're doing now isn't totally sustainable. Or that you've already sort of... Well, yeah, l- let me just put it this way. Posting a Simply Neological Simply Saturday video every week and running Hollow Taco and working reduced hours for the government is absolutely impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I have learned that. I have felt guilt about it. And I feel like I've come out of the other end of that guilt because I cannot do it. It's it's mm-hmm. just not possible. It's not a failure that I'm realizing on my part. Are you of time trying management. to convince yourself? I think I was, I don't even know how I managed to do that for a couple years or since Holo Taco started. Holo yeah. Taco has been an increasing amount of my time for obvious reasons. I love it, but it also needs my time for it to to be amazing and everything that I want it to be. No Mm -hmm. question. It needs my time dedicated to that. Um, In the government, I've taken periods of time time off and I work reduced hours when I'm on and that has helped a lot. Uh, And then COVID happened and like really messed things up for everyone who works in the government. And then the Simply videos, normally, I'd film those on a Sunday and then you would pre-edit it, like you would cut down the maybe six hours of footage so to, into something manageable, like two hours or an hour. And then I would edit that all week when I wasn't working on Hollow Taco or the government. So I'd spend like two and a half days just to make sure I edit it in time for Simply Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then I had no time left to eat. <laughs> <laughs> to do anything, yeah. To do anything. That's what um, wasn't sustainable. And I feel like maybe in your late 20s, you still had that that sort of energy of like, you know, when you're a student and you're able to stay up till five in the morning to get that essay done and hand it in. Like, I feel like you had to bring that sort of same energy to making all these things work and fit for a long time. Mm -hmm. And there's a point at which, you know, either your body (laughs) gives up on that or you just have to make a decision that that's not sustainable. So the decision I made was to not post regularly on simply every saturday because Mm -hmm. that was the one thing that if you look at a calendar of my time that took up a a lot of time and was so regular that like i knew it had to be every week that it it was cutting out the ability to do things that maybe took more time one week or not the other like if we're planning hollow taco collections or where there's a launch coming up then i absolutely don't have time for a simply video that is unrelated to that anyways Mm -hmm. and so that was the one consistent piece that i was doing that i just couldn't do anymore then there's factor number two the pressure and this kind of expectation to do a simply video every saturday was 
uh, not something I needed for, you know, my emotional health. <laughs> yes. Um, so removing that really helped me. It helped me focus on like the things I wanted to spend most of my time doing all, all week. And that doesn't mean there's never going to be a Simply video. It just means I've removed the expectation that it has to come out every Saturday. Mm -hmm. So there will be a Simply video at some point, but right now I'm enjoying streaming uh, because it's just fun and I get to like talk real time to you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. And last question. Very serious. When getting a cup of tea, do you pour the milk in first or the tea? Oh, blasphemy. There's only one right Is answer. Is there a right answer here? Well, you know what to do. I put the milk in after. Are there people who put milk then tea? Who are those people? <laughs> who are these Comment people? Comment down below <laughs> if you put milk and then tea. I'm trying to think, is there any like latte or something where you would do that? No, right? You always pour the milk in last. And especially if you're like steaming the milk and maybe I'm trying to add a little heart, mm. a little latte You art. are good at that. Not really. <laughs> it's It works better with coffee. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, always pour your water in first. Okay. Also, what sort of I milks, tea. what milks are we talking about? Oh, good point. But I don't think it changes the answer. No. So I use 1% regular milk cow milk uh, most of the time but i will have oat milk especially if i'm making a latte i love tea lattes with oat milk it's mm. so so like rich and thick and just really complements the tea mm -hmm. so good rich and thick just like you just like my crumbs <laughs> <laughs> wait what ben in a good way with two ben. c's rich with two c R well, you're rich you got money okay i need mean, you thicky are you are you judging me for my money you're like a family member <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the tea we have spilled. I know there was some serious tea spilled rather than just Scalding. silly tea. I have burns all over my legs from all the till. <laughs> I'm <laughs> all so the tea. sorry. <laughs> right, uh, but thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next Taco Tuesday. Yes, hope you have a fantastic Taco Tuesday. And when you get your tea cremes in the mail, I hope you have a wonderful time painting your nails for mm -hmm. fall. Enjoy your nail polish tea and tacos. <laughs> and we'll see you next Taco see Tuesday. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.